You're listening to the Social You Podcast, sponsored by Social University. Be sure to follow us on our socials listed in the show notes. Now, let's dive in. Hello, I'm Laura Black. And I'm Becky Johnson. And we are so glad you are joining us for the Social You Podcast. So this week, we are talking about the five things that we wish we had known before we started in social media. I feel like you could make a book full of things that I wish I had known in probably a year from now. There'll be things to add to that that I don't know right now. But as of right now in 2024, these are the things that I wish I had known and that Laura wishes she had known. Yeah, and we were going for five, and I think I have at least seven, and that was just a really quick list. So I could have done even more. You know, the little things we pick up along the way, you never know. You don't know until you know. Yeah. (laughs) So mine are kind of random order. I didn't rank in order of least to greatest. But one of the things that took me forever to figure out was that it's okay to recycle because I wanted that new pure content. And I mean, of course, I say that with a grain of salt. If it was good, it's been a long time. It was, you know, perform well the first time, tweak it a little bit. You know what I mean? Of course, all those grains of salt. But I was so stuck on, no, I've done that before. No, I've done that before. But when I finally realized that, wow, that was super helpful. Yes, I totally agree. That was not on my list, but only because I didn't think of it. That is absolutely true. So my first one is going to be, I wish I had known when I first started that you don't have to manually push things out daily, Mm -hmm. that you can schedule things out. There is a, a way to do that. There's a process, there is software, there are programs. And so at the very beginning, when I first started doing social media, literally every day I was going into Facebook and posting, going into Instagram and posting, going on the artist formerly known as Twitter and posting. And you just (laughs) don't really have to do that. I mean, so true and so time consuming. And mine, that goes along with one of mine that was, mine was planning in batches. I mean, if you can get those batches together and then schedule, you're really saving some time right there. I mean, that's just a game changer across the board. What's funny is you say batches goes along with the last one. Well, my next one goes along with batching. You have to have a content calendar Mm -hmm. because if you are just randomly trying to figure out what to do every day, either you're going to be inconsistent because you're not going to be able to think of anything or your stuff's going to be boring because you're going to end up doing the same thing over and over. Whereas if you have that two week rotation, three week rotation, at least a one week rotation, At least you know what you're going to be posting and you're not just randomly trying to find something every day, which does not lead to quality posting. Oh, not at all. And then like looking out at your quarter across the across the board, what your goal is and all these things you have to mix in. And I used to do that too, just sit there and go, oh, I don't know what to do today. If you get to that point and you don't know what to do today, it's already too late (laughs) to have a great cohesive plan that's going to push your marketing further and increase your bottom line. So having that content calendar, man, it's it's also another game changer. I'm going to say that word a lot because all these things really have changed the game for us. Right. That's why we wish we had known them. Yeah, absolutely. What's What's your next? So I would say mixing in more reality. I'm the one on the team that's the most particular probably. Everything has to be perfect and it has to be moved out it's a bad thing because I'm too into the perfectionist mode and then I think okay well this graphic has to have this and it has to be perfect and it has to but if you add reality into the mix it resonates so well with your audience and you pull in more people people want to see behind the scenes people want to see real it's okay to add in just like candid shots things like that depending on your client and all of that but mixing in more reality When I realized I could relax just a little bit and it was okay to just post those candid pictures and they performed so well, that's big. I mean, it doesn't all have to be super over the top polished. It keeps it real. I do feel like sometimes because we work for an agency, we think that we're expected to have everything super polished. But then I think about the accounts that I engage with and they're the ones that are just real people that are just really doing the thing, you know? Absolutely. And just even mixing in somebody's face once a week somewhere or or anything like that. It just, it it brings the company 
to the audience's level and they're touchable. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's not like some big corporate company that doesn't have a face, doesn't have a name, and it, it just reaches so far. So once I learned, okay, that's okay to do that. And that's a really actually a good thing to do that. So that was, that was big for me. So on the other side of that scale, my next one is that I had to learn when I first started, I wish I'd have known this, that what I like and what is best for my client are not always the same thing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like things to look a certain way because everybody has tastes and everybody thinks that their taste is the best. And that is not the voice that your client is going for. And so you might have to do things that you think are boring because that's what they want you to do. And it was really hard for me to be like, I don't want to produce this boring, what I think is boring quality work when that's what not only that they want, but what resonates with their audience. It's not always going to be an interesting thing to to us because, you know, we're just all different and figuring out their viewpoint and sticking to that. It is a little bit of a challenge. I would totally agree with that. There are some things that get out there that I think, oh, that's a mistake, but it's what they want. So is no accounting for taste. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Another one that kind of goes along with scheduling and posting and all of that is making sure that you work tagging into your posts especially on LinkedIn. I think it's that's the easiest place I've found to tag as far as corporate or business reaching. If you work in that tagging, it's networking through your captions, if that makes sense. I was trying to figure out a good way to say that, but we're always talking about networking is so big and you need to make social work for you and you can expand your online presence with all the networking. So work that into your posts. So share the wealth, tag somebody else. They're a lot of times going to re reciprocate and your network just keeps on growing. So working that tagging into your caption to where it's organic and it looks good and um, it's intentional has made a big difference, I think. Instead of yeah. just hoping somebody picks up on it, no, put them in there and tag them. That's, that's big. And it's one of those things where, like you were saying, it almost subconsciously builds this relationship where they feel obligated to then shout you out also. So then you're exposed to an entirely new audience, which is amazing. Well, it also shows, I think, your your willingness to be a big community player, you know, like to be a valuable part of the community. You're not necessarily reaching out for pats on the back or anything like that, but you're showing your community involvement. And these days with the Internet, it's maybe not just your community that you're in. It's nation and worldwide because of the Web. So I, I, I think that's big and being a team player. So my next one is the importance of consistency. Like I knew that it was important to post, you know, five times a week or to make sure that you're not just dropping off for two months. But I didn't really realize how important it was until I had two YouTube channels. <laughs> and for them, I had really, really good content. Like you're talking about, it's the polished content that I was really, really working on. And so I would only put out one of these videos, you know, ever so often, but they were good videos. And then I had another account that to me was just a hobby account where I would just put stuff out all the time. Mm -hmm. And the one that's really, really polished has like 500 subscribers. And mm -hmm. the one that is just, I just post trash all the time is like almost 1500 subscribers. <laughs> You know, you're right. I mean, people, it's, we obsess and try to make it perfect when people, I think, are really just searching for real life, especially in the world that we are in now with, is it fake? Is it not? You know, when people feel what resonates with them as real, they want to um, pursue that more. Agreed. So my next one is kind of switching gears just a little bit. And it's more relationship wise. I'm a pleaser. I want to do what everybody asks me. I don't like to say no. Karen's probably rolling her eyes over there because she knows it's so true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I want to make everybody happy. But it's okay to say no. And it's okay to set boundaries. I've been a customer service person my whole life. I know the, the customer's right, all of that. But the customer doesn't have to walk on you. Not that we have had that. We've had fabulous clients. But every now and again, there's somebody who wants to keep pushing the, pushing the line. And you, it's okay to say no. I mean, you say it with kindness and you don't have to be a jerk about it, but 
it's okay. And it's okay to push back just a little bit and uh, say what you know is right and what, what you've agreed to do. So that's something I needed to set boundaries with myself and what I was willing to do. But I still work on that. I feel like the way that I've had to think of it is if I say yes to this person's constant demands that are outside of the scope of their work, what I'm really doing is saying no to my other clients that deserve my time just as much. And I'm having to take time away from that to go deal with someone that's being reactive constantly. You know, that's so true. And I kind of am trying to get to that where I'm not robbing time from somebody else, dedicated time. Because it'll make you rush on the other stuff too. And that's not fair to the other client. So, or, or my family or my whatever, you know, it, it bleeds everywhere. So you're either going to be taking it away from another client or from your family and yourself mm-hmm. and your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sure. my last one, and this is one that I feel like looking back now, it seems silly because I started in social media even before I was at Social U, like several years ago. But I wish before I got started, I had known that social media was going to be the future. Like it was going to be everything because I'd have started way sooner. I'd have got way more involved. And I'd be rich right now. But I'm not. <laughs> Monetized. There we go. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's true, though. I mean, I don't think any of us could have predicted. Well, I mean, maybe Kara could have. But especially when we added the Internet. It was such a different thing and the way it's exploded over the last, what, 20 years has Mm -hmm. been just crazy. And so it makes me think, okay, what's the next 20 going to look like? You know, we're already going down those, all the AI rabbit holes and all the, and some great things out there, some amazing things out there. So you know how they always have the things where in the 1980s, they ask kids, what do you think it's going to be like in the year 2000? And they're just like off the wall. I'm going to do that right now. We're going to play this back probably in 20 years. And people are going to be like, wow, what an idiot. But I'm calling it right now that VR and hologram technology is going to be the next thing. Right now, video is the thing because it's the closest you can get to reality. But now you have virtual reality and mm-hmm. the price point is coming down. Regular people have VR headsets. Mm-hmm. They're going to get smaller and less cumbersome and i'm calling that that's going to be the next wave of social media oh i think that's not i think that's very reasonable my kid was asking me the other day so this is a nerd fact but i'm a crazy john denver fan and i was crushed i know exactly where i was sitting when i heard he died and i just like devastated me so i'm such a nerd because i always wanted to see him at red rocks but anyway that's beside the point anyway my kid said would you go to a concert if They had him playing as a hologram. And I mean, I think that's becoming a real thing. And I was like, well, I don't know. I mean, it'd probably depend on the cost. But I mean, I it's interesting. I've always wanted to see him. So maybe I would. I don't know. I've done the VR concerts too, where like I'm just in my living room with the headset on. Mm -hmm. And technology is so good now that you really feel like you are there. That's amazing. But you can be in your pajamas on your couch, which is my favorite way to enjoy things. I mean, win-win. You don't need an Uber. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Well, my last one is really just, we talk about this a lot. Uh, People are kooky. People are weird. And that's, I don't know. I live in my little bubble and I just think people are, all all people are normal. But, you know, you always have that one weirdo that comments ever so often. I mean, it doesn't happen for us a whole lot, but people are weird. And if it smells like a scam or a weirdo, it is. It probably is, you know. So that was something that was just funny to me because before I started social, everything I did was private. You know, like all of my accounts are locked down still and I wasn't getting random comments from weirdos. Yeah, send me your feet pics. No, just kidding. But (laughs) so I don't know. Anyway, that was my other one. It's like, oh, I wish I'd have thought more about that. So. So everyone listening knows our feet picks are available, but they're very expensive. So yeah. you probably can't afford them. This is a lot, but I have three different things that I want to touch on for this week in social media, because there are three things that I feel like have to be talked about and they will not be relevant if we wait. Mm-hmm. So 
let's let's get into it. Come on, Karen. I went over here on Rocky Mountain High just waiting to tap in. I love me some John Denver, man. I love the name of the cat in the cowboy hat singing country roll. Before we go into what is happening in social media this week, Karen, do you have any input on what you wish you had known before you started social media? Yeah, I am really just three points to make. First and foremost, I understood when I very first started in 2010 that it was a great tool. I did not realize at that time it would be a critical priority. Mm -hmm. I wish, and I totally agree with you guys, I wish I had known earlier how much this would impact businesses, especially small businesses, because it took me, I started on LinkedIn and I had requests to teach it in 2010 and just, I'm like, no, nobody wants to learn. That's crazy. Nobody wants to hear that. So wrong. So, so wrong. So yeah. And when Pinterest started and it was in the beta format, nobody's going to use this for business. Also wrong. It's our best resource for our blog to this day. Our 10,000 hits a month are coming from Pinterest. It, it's crazy. I just, I wish I'd known that ahead of time. I also 100% agree boundaries are everything. I wish I had known this was going to be so all consuming before I had, when I was still doing a lot of this stuff by myself, I literally worked all the time. I worked on weekends. I worked at night. I answered my phone at nine o'clock. I'd answer my phone at 8 a.m., which is it's insanity. And I would check those comments, cost, 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 cost. You cannot do that. It's not realistic. And it sounds like a luxury to be able to work whenever you want to work, but it turns into consumptions. It turns into consumption. So I think boundaries are very important. I think it's critically important to be able to tell your client, I'm going to be off this day and I will not be available, which is the main reason we have backups on every single account so that anybody can be off when they need to be off. It's too much. And I, I wish I'd also known, again, totally agree with you guys, real is transparent is good and done is better than perfect. Just get it done. Get it out there. It's totally user-generated content. It's awesome. Stop worrying about polish and just do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see so many people that are really successful and people will be asking them questions like, well, what camera do I need? What this do I need? What the, and they're like, whatever you have. Start yeah. with what you have because what you do at the beginning is going to suck anyway and nobody's going to see it. So go ahead and start and get those reps in so that when you can't afford the good equipment, you know what you're doing. Well, and you, I mean, it's always getting better. I've, mm -hmm. I've gone back and looked at content I made in like 2012. It is the worst. It is so bad. But at the time, it was better hands down than anything else around it. So there's always evolution. There's always going to be change. But yeah, just get it done. And sometimes I'll look back at old graphics and I'll think, wow, I could have done better. But then I also remember I was using old programs. That's and so true. I didn't have all the features that Canva has now. I was having to make those drop shadows myself. And it's just so much easier now. And we were rocking those drop shadows, but yeah, we were rocking the drop shadows. We, now we're really rocking. I had a meeting with somebody who's very new to this and we were talking about graphics. And I said, it, like one of my first videos ever on YouTube is showing people how to make a graphic with a quote. She said, what do you mean? I'm like, there was no Canva. You had to go find a program that would do what you needed it to do. And you, uh, you know, just cross your fingers that it wasn't going to be violently expensive or so complicated you couldn't do it. But we still have the URL saved for color matching website because nobody else could do it. It was impossible to get that color number. There was no Canva. Wow. We've come a long way. <laughs> yeah. So what is new this week? in social media. The first one is, I just have to know who you got, Jake Paul or Mike Tyson. Yes, Mike Tyson is way, way older and probably not as in good a shape, but also has the experience and technique of years and years of being a dominant champion. Scary. He's scary. I mean, Mike Tyson. Yeah, I would say Mike Tyson. I hope it's Mike Tyson, because here's the deal. Age before beauty. <laughs> getting, getting beat by Mike Tyson is still a flex. Like you oh, were yeah. able to 
fight Mike Tyson, but beating up an old guy is not a flick. If he wins, they're going to say, oh, well, because because he's old now and you just are this young guy that just beat up an old man. It reminds me of the movie Secondhand Lions. Have you guys seen that? If you haven't seen it, watch it. And it's, for the most part, child appropriate, Becky. So you're, you know, 200 kids can watch that one. <laughs> so he's 57. I just had to Google him real quick. He's 57 years That's old. That's younger wow. than I thought he was. I thought he I was old. Yeah. Me too, but he's still... My yeah. money's on a 57-year-old Mike Tyson. Now, Jake Paul has been actually boxing, not just fighting other YouTubers. I know that's how it started. So he is actually a boxer, and he is actually really, really fit. But my heart says Mike Tyson. Oh, my word. He was born in 1997. Ah, oh, then he is about to be 27 years old. There you go. Yep, 27. He was born my, in marriage, my marriage was also born in 1997. So All right. Man, 1997 sounds like a baby. Yeah. And I'm like, as well as 30? What? I could totally be his mom, for sure. <laughs> if my kid said, I want to fight Mike Tyson, I'd be like, you're crazy. Like, do you want to die? Yeah. You <laughs> could die. <laughs> but you know what? For the money, I'd fight Mike Tyson. So let's be real. One knockout, millions of dollars. I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> Never have to work again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Of course, you might have not have any brain cells to work again. Mm -hmm. The last one is where we're going to park because it's the one that I know that we're going to have the most feelings about. And that is Bryn's mom on TikTok. The whole child exploitation. Does she realize something's wrong and doesn't care because there's money involved? Does she really think everything is innocent and she's just really naive? No way. No way. Just a quick summation, Ren's mom, there is a woman who has an account that features her four-year-old daughter, adorable little girl. She also has a son, but you would not know that because he's not in any of the videos. It's always focused on the daughter. And the mom has the daughter sometimes in very questionable positions, in very adult outfits, doing inappropriate things. Things that could be misconstrued or used for nefarious reasons. So it has been pointed out to her that she is putting her child in danger and she has vehemently denied that's absolutely, she started with denying that's not true. You can't prove it to, I had, I looked into it. The FBI looked into it and there's no images of her on the dark web. Why would there need to be images of her on the dark web when you've got them splattered all across TikTok and Instagram? And there's so much evidence that she knows exactly what she's doing because you can pick the frame for your primary image on TikTok or YouTube. And she is picking the most salacious image that she can because the more clicks, the more saves, the more views, it pays her bills. There are several very odd things that the little girl has said that I, I can't imagine another toddler saying stuff like that. Because it sounds adult and inappropriate. So I I honestly think not only does she know, I'm beginning to question if she's involved in something nefarious herself. I'm also beginning to wonder if she's taking money for specific requests. Because she had a post recently involving honey uh-huh. that is just not a normal thing to do with your kid. So that opens up a bigger discussion in my mind about mommy walkers in general and i wholeheartedly believe if you cannot be a mommy blogger or vlogger and not show your kids faces that you don't need to be doing that there is mom content that is outstanding there are working moms there are stay-at-home moms there are so much amazingly good mom content out there and i follow a bunch of mom accounts I don't have to see pictures of your kid in the bathtub to qualify your content. And if you're going to do that, I think it should be demonetized. I think the parents that rely solely on their kids for their content, that should be demonetized. It makes me, it brings me back to, you guys know there are families who will sell their house and they'll go on the road like van life families. Mm-hmm. And they'll cram their four kids into a sock drawer while they have a bedroom. And then they turn the camera on and turn the camera in their face when they're being punished or they're crying or they're upset. That shouldn't be able to be monetized. Those poor kids. 
Yeah, anything that would humiliate your child to see when they are old enough to understand should never make it to the internet. And Absolutely. I think that this content, while way more dangerous than that, even that bar, it crosses. Like, this is stuff that when this girl's 15 years old, she's going to be like, why the heck is this on the internet? You know? Yeah. And like, if your kid is crying, if if you're doing something to scare your child, to get a scare reaction, your parents should not be your first bully. Yeah. Have you, you guys mm-hmm. remember the trend where p- the parents were cracking the egg on their kid's head? Hated it. Uh-uh. I hated that. Why would you okay. do that? Okay. The trend was to set up the camera. It's a bonding experience, parent, child. And then the mom would turn around and crack the egg on the kid's head. Video after video, the kid would either cry or hold their head and say, that was mean. Or or say, why, why did you do that to me? It's humiliating. A lot of cases, it's painful. And the parent is not only recording it, they are laughing. We teach our kids not to do that to other people. Why? Why, Why would they do that? Why would you There's- encourage any of you that would like get them in trouble at school, but they did it? I would never ever. Oh, God. And there's one. There's a girl now who is lobbying to have her image removed because her parent, her mom was a like a mommy vlogger. And she is so horrified by the content that's posted. She is protesting to have it all removed. And I think there's going to be a lot of lonely parents in nursing homes when their kids get old enough to realize what's going on. So because we have adopted so many children and we have transracial adoption, I had a blog a long time ago that I started just because there weren't a lot of resources for me when I was going through that. And I wanted to just put the story out there for other people. And I would just use like the first letter of the kids' names. I wouldn't put their whole names. Mm -hmm. But... As they got older, and especially as some of their issues started to be issues that were more concerning that they wouldn't want people to know about, I had to stop it because I thought, even when I'm trying to be this careful, somebody's going to be able to figure this out. Like, somebody's going to be able to figure out that either through my profile, like, these are my kids, or Mm -hmm. finding their names and say, oh, yeah, this is the first letter of all these ladies' kids. And so I just didn't want them when they were older. And it was nothing that I feel like they should be ashamed of because it was stuff they had no control over. But it is stuff that I feel like could be embarrassing to them. And I just didn't want them to have to deal with that when they got older. Yeah, but recording your child's first menstrual cycle or recording them being punished. No, ma'am. Absolutely not. And for those of you guys who know me, I never call out my, I have one child and I never call him out by name. I have always called him mini me to protect his identity. And you will not find images of him as a little kid anywhere. I I have like on his birthday, I have like one or two baby pictures. And that's the only thing I use because I just don't want him to have all of these weird images when he's an adult and look back and say, no, I don't like that. And now he's old enough to say, I don't want this posted. I have I have never, since he's been able to talk, posted anything without his consent. Well, also, also there's important. a difference between posting it on your private accounts that are restricted to your friends and, and posting account. it publicly across the world. That's a yeah. that's also a layer of this. That's sort yeah. of videos of this little girl like eating pickles, eating corn dogs, eating corn. Come on. And I will say for the people that do have the private accounts, like my Facebook is private and Mm -hmm. I put like every vacation picture I ever had on there because it's for one, it's for my people that don't live close enough to see those things in real life. And two, it's a backup in case my computer ever dies and my hard drive fails or my house burns down. But one of the things that I learned is be careful who you tag in pictures because my husband's account was not private. And I would tag him in pictures that had the kids and then other people were able to get those pictures. So, right. right. If you don't want other people seeing them, be careful who you tag. Because if you tag somebody who doesn't have a private profile, then everyone will be able to see those. Pay attention to your security settings on everything like that because you're putting your life out. One of the best analogies I've seen is the bear analogy. And I, it'd be great if we could add that in our notes so that people can watch it because it's one of the most effective ways to understand not only does this woman, I, I believe she knows exactly what she's doing. 
I think she's doing it on purpose to earn income. And it makes me question her own motivations because how can you possibly do that to your child unless that's something that you're participating in? How important is money to you? Is it more important than the well-being of your child? And if so, where's DHR? Right? That's what's screaming in my head. Where's DHR? I mean, if your child, if if the thumbnail that you choose is the one where your child's on their back with their legs up in the air and their feet wide apart, yeah. where where is the protection for that child? Well, and the, she's going to find out. Yeah, she's four now, but one day she's going to be 40. One day she's going to be 24. One day she's going to be 14 and she's going to wonder how did that why did that happen why did my mom let that happen get ready parents to be no contact yeah and not have access to your grandkids because your child is protecting them from you yeah and I, I like what you said too about the um consent like right now my kids my little kids are like take a picture mommy send it to karen put it put it on instagram do all the things Kaden. You see how rare the pictures of her are because she's my 18-year-old daughter and she is like, do not take my picture. And then if she lets me take a picture, she's like, don't post that. She'll let me post a group photo on Mother's Day. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Disney World. I can post a group photo. But you see very few pictures just of her because she does not give me permission and I don't disrespect that. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you're younger. Your littles are ham bones i was when i was little how yeah, they are they're so funny dance and sing and, and ham it up in front of a camera that's so that's totally okay you're sharing huh. your friends and family it's not compromising they're not in the shower they're not oh i cannot imagine i mean it makes my skin crawl when i see people i know who post bathtub pictures of their kids mm-hmm. and i know that they don't mean anything by it and they're not people that are trying to make money or be weird and i'm still like there's too many creepers in the world she Absolutely. Is dressing this kid up in outfits that look very adult. She's four. That's so heartbreaking. I mean, just I I had no I didn't know about this story until what today or last night. And I I don't even have words for it. It's mm-hmm. so it's so I don't even know. I don't even know. This is a very serious topic, and I think there really needs to be more restrictions laws put in place to protect kids our laws have not kept up with cyber security in any way in any way this crosses um, a major line major. Cross major line and there are i actually looked into because i like to volunteer i'm on the board of directors for safe house that protects against domestic violence against women and children and i years ago went and started doing research on predator volunteering and you guys have seen it online where you have people who will go into chat rooms and forums and pretend to be 13 so they can get these folks arrested. It is very difficult to do. Um, it was traumatizing. I couldn't even complete the trick. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. But you have these people, part of how they get arrested is when they have illegal images saved on their computer. Yeah. Images that are being posted are not illegal. We can put a link to the study that shows when predators cannot have access to illegal images or video, they will access what's available on Instagram and TikTok. That's just the way it is. Wow. So when you see these videos being saved 100,000 times, they're not being saved by their aunts and uncles 100,000 times. No, they're being saved by a predator to use later. And that's legal. Mm. What I'm saying, the laws need to catch up with what's actually happening in real time and as long as that kind of thing is legal that's not gonna happen no that's it's It's kind of like you said you know that's what if there's nothing else available i think about it's the 13 year old boy with the jc penny catalog you know like that's Mm -hmm. all you got yeah that's you use yeah victoria's secrets national geographic let me show my age national geographic (laughs) yeah so like and there's always going to be something to find, but I don't want it to be my kid. No, I don't want it to be my kid. No. And when people bring that to your attention, like even giving the benefit of the doubt, if she really didn't realize, it's been brought to her attention now. And exactly. the fact that it's still happening is a problem. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was fun. Great. <clears throat> good talk. Good talk. <laughs> so, fired up about that. I'm like, I, let me get my pitchfork. Uh, yeah. Very, very strong feelings on that topic. Sorry. So our big swing to the lighter side for Thank our you. social media hotline. Social media hotline? Uh-huh. You want to file a complaint? Okay. Oh, your friend that does social media won't help you for free? <laughs> mm. Yeah, nobody wants to do anything for free. That's why people get paid to do their jobs. Okay. You pay them and then you call us back. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that that hits home. It's just playing on Facebook. Can't you just do it for free? Well, let me just pick your brain. It only takes a quick second. Do that for really their job. It's just an antibiotic shot. It took you like two seconds. You're my friend. Can you just do it for free? What? You're actually paying for the two seconds. You're paying for the 15 years it took me to learn it. Right. And we are politely slam we are slam and we don't do anything that takes two seconds to be we'll nothing assume that it does because they can make a post in two seconds but they're not putting any strategy into that post yeah or it'll be exposure for you i'll tell everybody that you do my social media i don't need your exposure check <laughs> like we need clients not other people that are going to then ask us to do stuff for free because you get it for free if anybody is any small business owner, hear me now. The people who value your time will always value your time and they will cheerfully pay for it. The people who do not value your time will take advantage constantly. They will never not take advantage. Yeah. It's, I love to help. I, I do. I'm happy to help. I will help. I love to answer questions. That's why I go live. If you have questions, ask me. But I cannot, there's not enough time in the day for as many Facebook recovery requests that we get. We have so, I have so many, they are queued up. Like you can only do one or two at a time. And I'm, I'm doing that. And when Facebook gets busy, they take the button down. They take the customer service request down. So it's been down for two weeks. And I'm just now to the point where I can go in and do it again. It's, it's, it's such a time suck. But I say that because you'll get folks who just want to, just let me do a quick, just a quick, I have a Calendly link, 15 minutes. I don't mind. I have like open office hours once a week for like an hour. If you have a question or pop into any live that I have and ask your question, but there's not enough time in the day for these one-on-ones. Mm -mm. Right. That's pretty if it's a client, your client, we're going to bend over backwards to help you. If I don't know the answer, I'm going to go look for the answer. Well, come on. And I always like to say to if you are my friend, I'm going to try to help you. But when it comes to like really deep things or time consuming things, Google is your friend. Don't ask me something you've not Googled. But let's be real. Yeah, your friend right. isn't going to ask for it for free. Yeah. I have friends in the industry. I have a friend who does heating and air. Do I pay for that service? You bet I do. Right. No. I have a friend who was a videographer. Did I pay for that service? I did. You. Mm -hmm. And that brings up a good point. If somebody wants to trade services, I might be down for that. Are, you want to give me a tattoo and I'll do your social media? Hey, let's go all day. But yeah, like I have to be getting something out of it because my kids can't eat exposure, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, power company doesn't take exposure payments. No. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So our last segment, sipping social media tea. <laughs> it was a good one this week. And when I say this week, I mean this week for us. It may have not been posted this week for them. Yeah. As always, I will link them down in the show notes so that you can check them out. Because especially if you do social media, they are so hilarious. I mean, sometimes it's hilarious. Sometimes it's just relatable and sad. But most of the time, it's hilarious. So check them out. But this one that we're doing today says... An investor told our marketing director that we should just create social media ads for product features that don't exist yet because the ads will get clicked the most and be an indicator of the features we should start creating. Yeah, because that makes so much sense. Yeah, that works. 
So yeah, let's make ads for things that are not even available because that's going to be great for your social media person when people start getting mad because the thing that they think is available is actually not available. And for the people that want the thing that didn't get clicked on the most that now think that there is a way for them to have it, so sad. Plus, let's waste all these valuable resources that could be used doing something that is effective. Right. Yeah. I hate waste of time. I mean, if I have a client come to me and say, hey, would you do an ad for me about flamenco dancing? And I say, oh, you're offering that now? And they say, I'm not, but I'm going to learn how to do it if a lot of people click on that ad. I would be like, no, that is insane. Why would you do that? If you want to, if you want to teach flamenco, go take the lessons and learn how to teach it. You are setting yourself up for very angry feedback. Mm -hmm. And the person that's going to be right at the front line of that feedback is your social media Social media manager. Because that's where everybody's going to go to complain. Yeah, kill me. Yeah, absolutely and then, not. And then you have the executives that are then blaming the social media <laughs> person for the problems on social media that they have no control over. Good times, good times. Yeah, I mean, them. let's be real. Ads are expensive. And Facebook ads are so much more expensive now than they were even six months ago. It's just not cost effective to just run a random ad about crap you don't have. Right. <laughs> Why would you even do that? Why would you? Here, do take that? my money. Yeah. Next week, the um, thing that we're going to talk about is something that we've touched on a lot in the past few weeks, and that is hackers and scammers. So hopefully, we're going to be able to help some of those Facebook business pages protect themselves and not get scammed and hacked and maybe tell the older person in your life that doesn't have as much experience with the internet to listen next week because you don't want your grandma losing her life savings to it's, a Nigerian prince. So it's very, very real that they've gotten so much more polished in uh -huh. order to recognize. Yeah, I really want to dig into that next week. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening to the Social You podcast sponsored by Social University. We'll see you next week.